Hi. Um, first, I'd like to thank the International Wood Culture Society for inviting me to participate, and um, also for the people of Nepal for being such wonderful hosts. Um, my lecture is entitled uh, Wood Translated, and what I'm going to do is take you through a uh, loosely chronological and um, compact version of my making process to show you how I've gone from a wood chair that you see on the right hand side to a soil chair which you see on the left hand side. So it's basically how um, woodworking, materials, um, process, furniture, uh, and inspiration has influenced uh, what I do. So just to give you guys a little bit of context, I'm from the United States, if you didn't guess that. Uh, from Central Valley of California, which is Stockton, and this is what it looks like where I come from, very sort of agricultural. Um, I studied woodworking after finishing my undergraduate work at UC Davis in architecture. Um, I went up to a place called College of the Redwoods, and there I learned um, a lot about woodworking. So just like Wendy and Yuri, um, I identify as a woodworker, as a fine woodworker, and mainly as a furniture maker. Um, pictured here is the man who started that school, James Krinov, and pictured here are a bunch of students who are working with hand tools. So um, some of you are familiar with that school, others that are not. Um, it is based heavy in tradition um, of woodworking and joinery and hand tools and hand skills and a refinement of a material. So really learning how wood works and, and um, the properties of it and, and basically getting it to do what you want it to do. I also love that they all had suspenders on. So this was one of the first pieces that I made at College of the Redwoods. Um, and I put it in here, this is from an article I wrote, but you can see that I'm influenced even at the beginning of my woodworking career by nature. So um, you can see the um, flowers at the bottom that inspired the shape of the table. This is a jewelry box and it is about 13 inches tall and I'm just working really with technique and formal elements uh, at this point. Um, learning about the material, this material came actually from a friend of mine who I know there's a lot of people here from Petaluma, um, his orchard in Petaluma. And this is a rocking chair and Danish cord seat. And once I finished um, College of the Redwoods and my undergraduate degree, I felt like I had a good grasp on design and architecture and also woodworking and how things went together. So I decided to go to graduate school at San Diego State University, the same place Yuri went to, and study under Wendy Mariama, who just presented. I love that photo of her. And this was a true inspiration. Um, and this was a while ago now, like probably mm, a long time ago. Anyways, it's, it was a true inspiration then and, and to today. I'm working with her out here and it's absolutely amazing to work uh, beside her, or alongside her, and see how she works with, with all of the other makers. Um, so my early work in graduate school was still heavily based off of the work that I did at um, College of the Redwoods, still learning about a material. So this is just um, kind, of, kind of an in-between furniture, and in-between sculpture. Um, playing around with commercial veneer, it's uh, about six feet tall and it's a room divider. Um, the image on the right is backlit, so I'm playing around with pattern and geometry. Here's a detailed shot of that um, using commercial veneer, uh, which is the walnut panels. It was my first time ever using um, that type of material ever and using it in an unconventional or a non-traditional way. Um, again, playing around with just form and geometry and function, this is a, um, a small series of handbags that incorporates metal and wood, so this is like a purse that opens like this. Um, this is also a purse that's laying um, on a table, something that I had made before, so it's not um, basically full or three-dimensional, but you get an idea still I'm playing with formal elements, adding things together um, to create whole parts. Um, another handbag in that series, and I, I'm exploring materials again, um, incorporating metal and wood. 
And then I started playing around with felt after a little um, semester I spent in Sweden, which I didn't include in this slide presentation because of time. But again, I'm still working with um, exploring materials, their potential, um, using them in non-traditional ways. So the felt that would normally be used for, I think, sound dampening machines, I've actually taken that and strung it together like an accordion and made it a structural part of this uh, Chase Lounge. And then I started looking at inspiration and concept into objects. And so this uh, next piece is entitled Chrysalis. And the idea is you go in this chase lounge and you wrap up in this shawl um, sort of the material that you see flowing there and you feel swaddled like a baby is swaddled and you can transform and become something new when you leave the chrysalis. Um, something else that's really interesting about this process um, of the felt is I was um, taking raw felt, um, so the wool itself, and I was actually felting the material. So I was transforming the material, um, just like the concept of the piece where you are transformed when you're in it. Um, I'm looking at animals, um, their, their um, materials, so I'm taking wool from sheep and I'm using that as seeding. Um, and I'm also looking at the way that animals interact, how chairs face each other, how people interact with each other, and exploring, again, formal elements, ideas, how these objects relate to the body. And this was a, a, a pretty pivotal point in um, my making career, which I think both Wendy and, and Yuri um, alluded to as well. Uh, I made something that looks like a pretty standard chair, so it's an archetype of a chair. I didn't want it to stand out as like high design or reference anything besides the fact that it's a chair that you sit in. And uh, this is out of ash, and I did a prototype, and I made it modular so I could take those pieces and uh, make a mold of them and cast them into other materials. So. What I did is I recreated them in um, several different materials. And here you'll see on the left-hand side, um, soil. So this is where my mud work begins. There's wax and there's ash. And there's several more and I can't remember, yeah, if I included them in here, this one is metal. So it's solid bronze, 220 pounds. <laughs> you can't move it very easily. And I'm looking at how the material changes the object and what we perceive as um, valuable and not valuable. Um, and that was the sort of departure point for me. So I started looking at these iconic pieces of furniture and we have people from all over the world, but I would imagine that um, several of you recognize the cafe chair, which is the most reproduced iconic chair in the world. And I reproduced that in soil. Here's an Eames chair. And then I started creating installations um, off of memories from my time in Sweden. So I'm recreating a forest and a forest floor and the chairs and the furniture growing from the forest floor, suspending birch poles. And here we go back to that very or the original slide. So this is an early American 18th century um, Rococo chair uh, and I have reproduced it in mud so I'm asking where is the value in this chair? I, I believe in 1987 this chair at auction went for 2.7 million dollars one of the originals not this mud one um, and, I'm, and I'm wondering where the value comes is it, is it the object? Is it the material? And here's an installation um, of a chandelier in two of the chairs at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And because this is a wood conference, I wanted to end on wood, so I'll start talking a little bit about this. And um, this is uh, a CNC, a computer numeric controlled machine. So I'm really interested in, uh, I don't want to say new technology, but really any sort of process that um, is new to me, whether that's manip manipulating a material that's otherwise thought of worthless or learning a new joint in woodworking. So I'm playing around with these ideas and I'm taking inspiration from fashion, perfect, and looking at nature, 
that's an ice, an ice cave on the right and mushroom gills on the left. And I'm using the furniture form, so basic traditional furniture forms as backdrops or canvases for my work. And there's a detail shot and I'm using these to create a series. These are a small set of stools and that's the end. Thank you.